Okay, so here's basically what I've got here. This is just a single fork tracking arm for any powered telescope, okay? So I took it off of the tripod and I just built this wedge, okay? This wedge obviously has the adjustment up and down for your latitude, okay? So what I did is I took my pieces of wood, I put a level on it so I can know where my level is. Here's my threaded rod, and I use this down here. Double jam, just like that, so we don't go nowhere. Okay. Now this is loose on here, so I can just, I mean, it's not loose, but it's snug, so I can just adjust it like that, and it'll stay put. These will like, tighten for when I've got my final adjustment, but I have never even gotten that far. I have still been just drifting and keeping it there. Okay. My bought mine, it didn't have the dovetail clamp anymore, so I just made this. You'll probably buy one, if you do, it'll have a dovetail clamp. So, you can just put a piece of wood and shave it down so it fits in the clamp and tighten it down and there's your plate like you've got here, okay? Basically all I did was I'm just using a quarter 20 bolt with some spacers and I just stick it right in there and tighten my camera down, okay? Now the tricky part to this all comes with your polar alignment, okay? Now, the key is being set where you need to be on your home position, okay? And that is this angle here and this angle here are square. This angle here and this angle here are square, okay? Now this has a motor to go up and down and this has a motor to go side and side. When you're tracking in an alt as position without the wedge and this is sitting straight up, both those motors have to work, okay? To make it track across the sky. When it's on a wedge, this angle matches the angle you're looking at the sky and the sky goes across the stars, bang. Okay, so now with this, this angle is actually matching the angle to Polaris that way to make that a 90 degree angle, okay? Well, not a 90 degree angle, but the, to match the angle of the square, I guess. I'm not a geometry expert here, but <clears throat> now when you're trying to polar align, you're gonna move this left or right to get Polaris in your crosshairs, okay? So this is gonna make Polaris move left or right, obviously. And now this adjustment here, just pushing on anywhere on this plate will work. Pushing it up and down will put Polaris up and down in your crosshairs, okay? I always just kind of get it rough. I don't have to get Polaris 100% in my crosshairs because you're going to need to drift a line because it's not exactly on the North Celestial Pole. So, you know, I'll look at a polar scope alignment app and kind of see where the Celestial Pole is compared to Polaris and I'll just kind of get it close to that and then I'll drift align my adjustments after taking a few exposures and see which way my trails are going. Um, so now I'm just going to kind of let you see how this is all built. Basically I just took this plate and kind of made it for about a 45 because I'm at 43 degrees here. So I'm going to need obviously this adjustment here to make it perfect because of whatever angle you're actually sitting at on the ground. Now this, I just took a coupler and drilled a hole and drove it through there. And then this rod goes up and down through there. On this, I kind of screwed up and I just, this hole should actually be smaller so that the piece that screws onto here to screw it onto the bottom of the tripod will actually hold it. And I didn't do that, I made this hole too big. So what I did, I had to actually put a screw in there and nicely machine it all level and I'm sure that it would show up in an exposure, but I have actually haven't seen an exposure ruined to that yet, so that's cool. Um, <clears throat> you know, so this is going to be your adjustment here. Um, I was thinking about actually finding one of those rounded dome nut caps to put on the end of this because it's actually not very smooth when I cut it down. So it kind of has a little hook on it and if you catch that it jumps quite a bit. So I was thinking one of those domed rounded nut caps would work really nice for that. So basically make this, drill your hole so that this can slide up and down. Um, not loose and snug, 
that's the only thing that's holding this board on here is those two. I was going to put some kind of a piano hinge here, but I didn't even need that. Okay, so this is just held together by one small bolt here through the middle of the tripod. And that's it, you know. Um, once you get it to your home points, um, I put a piece of tape here for aligning it. Then I put a line there for marking it when it's level for when you're trying to do your go-to alignment. Because once you polar alignment, then you can do a go-to alignment in, in the hand controller and it'll take you wherever you want to go. Or you can just polar align it, move it, point your cam, and start tracking. So, you know, if you know what you want, you know, wide angle, you're not going to need to know as well. Um, you know, 300 millimeters and up, even 50 millimeters is kind of hard to um, set your shot up. Um, so basically, just try and make everything as square as possible. And it's going to work out really well. And it's not much more expensive and time consuming, really, when you look at building a barn door tracker. It takes a lot of time to secure the motors and all that when all you can do is build your wedge get it close make your adjustments and put that on there and then you have it so it's a budget upgrade to a barn door tracker and i made this for about a hundred bucks um you can probably get done a little bit cheaper if you search around or use your own tripod and just get this mount and engine or engine uh controller so uh yeah engine i'm listening to them work over there with the tractor so uh, all right there it goes